The 2001 French Open from Roland Garros is brought to you by Raymond James, listening to you like you're the only investor in the world. By Porsche, discover what only Porsche brings to driving. By Aflac, without it, no insurance is complete. And by Exxon Mobil and the Save the Tiger Fund. Live in Paris on a beautiful Sunday afternoon, just past 3 p.m., and the temperature in the low 70s. Now to the players and family section, let's join Bud Collins. Ted, Yevgenia Kafelnikov, the Russian art critic who dabbles in tennis and won this title five years ago, has <laughs> called Guga Kirtan the Picasso of tennis because of his creative shot making. Well, last Sunday, when Guga barely escaped from Michael Russell, match point down, he performed and put an original artwork on this court chatrier. The crowd loved it. It was his salute to their support. And he loved the crowd. He was lucky to get out of it. But you know what happened? Somebody should have dug that up and sent it to the Louvre. Instead, the unfeeling grounds crew, culture killers, hosed it down, and it's gone. <laughs> they call that conceptual art. Yeah. <laughs> the best reaction to that was Andre Agassi, who simply said, I wish I'd thought of that myself. And here is Guga with his amazing record. Call him Guga in Brazil. That is a very common nickname for Gustavo. And he's simply known by the one name. Guillermo Correa is going to be someone you'll see on your service. First round, Kirtan upended him. Alami, the Moroccan, gave him some trouble. Russell had match point in the fourth round. Kefelnikov, tough win there. This is a surprise for me, how easily he dispatched of one Carlos Ferrero in the semis. And two players that had, had grueling matches in the past while well, upholding the banner of Spain, a country that's done so well on this surface in the last decade, is Alex Correcha, who John backed off. He didn't play at all on the Australian hardcourt season this year. Well, he, you, you want to know why. Unfortunately for us, they were in the Davis Cup final. They beat us in the semifinal. That was played in December. He just felt the recovery time. He needed that, and he would try to peak for this event which has been his best result. Zabaleta immediately took him to five sets. Then things started getting easier for Croatia. You yeah. see Santoro, who had beaten Safin. Federer, you're going to see at Wimbledon. You're going to see him around the circuit as one of the top players. And instead of playing Agassi, which would have been very, very interesting, needless to say, he got Grosjean. And Grosjean, the moment too big for the Frenchman. Okay. Gustavo Kierden, his third final, he's won the first two. Trying to join a most elite group of champions who've won this event three times. And Karecha to serve. had a chance to win three championships here was Sergi Bruguera and in 1997's championship Gustavo Kierten the unseated unheard of Brazilian beat him in the finals Bruguera actually is still out there battling he had Michael Russell two sets to one the previous round and defaulted fatigue mentioned in the opening how glorious a day it is but guess what it's typical Paris weather yeah, it's starting to turn it's suddenly gotten quite windy out there both players not fond of playing under these conditions it's unfortunate to see right at the beginning because both players are obviously going to be nervous Croatia more so and he's the guy that needs to get off to a better start Can I congratulate, by the way, it's a total aside, but Ray Bork for that effort in the Stanley <laughs> Cup final because uh, you, you'd have to call him, in a, in a sense, the Agassiz of tennis yes. because he's, I believe he's 40 years old. 
I was going to think of him as the uh, more like what Jimmy Connors was. Maybe when Jimmy, but he, mm -hmm. but see, Jimmy lost in the semis. So mm -hmm. He's all the way wins it. But maybe that's where it helps to have teammates. You're out there by yourself. Those bones a little weary, but that was uh, big time for 21 years in the league. You win his first Stanley Cup. That's very nice. Today or tonight, depending on where you are on NBC, you'll we'll see Game Three of the NBA Finals, and your friend Larry Brown. Larry Brown. The I mean, he he did something unheard of, which was leave for a couple of days. Just I, I I need a break. That, that's the first time that I ever remember or ever heard about a coach doing that, and he's he's worked magic there. And you got to be pulling for them. As, as great as the Lakers are, little uh, Allen Iverson can jump out of a building. <laughs> So we'll have our wrap party, and then maybe right after that, about 1 a.m., I, I think it's 1 a.m. here. We have Because they cut, they showed the hockey here. They showed mm -hmm. the best. What's great. I was able to watch Ray Bork skating with the Stanley Cup at about 5.20 in the morning here It's nice Paris. of Dick Ebersole to work out a yes. deal with the French TV. <laughs> I think Karecha back from 1.30 now, game point. Let's write Please that off to the wind. Please tell me that's wind. <laughs> wind and nerves. He takes a big swing. You see why this is going to be a problem for him if this continues. Unlike an Agassi, for example, who can shorten his swing if necessary. You mentioned Connors, the same thing. Karecha doesn't have that ability. He's got a lot of other attributes. Mm -hmm. Extremely fit man. He's learned to hit a bigger serve. He's an adequate volleyer. He played some pretty good doubles in Davis Cup. He's got one of the best backhands in the business. He should have had a check to see how long it would be for Guga threw in his no, first drop no, shot. He managed to get in the first game. Karich is not just a clay quarter. He's had some very good results in his career on hard courts. You know, was, when I talked to him before, uh, he, he said that his dream, the first time I would heard him say this, was to win the U.S. Open more than the French. So he said that to you. He I, I said, that. you're slick, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> Tell the fans of, of America that I, in New York, that I love the U.S. Open. I said, come on. <laughs> Let's not push this. Well, to win today, Alex Karic is going to have to overcome some history that's not in his favor, and this is one of them. This Gustavo the won the last four matches on play, nine straight sets, and really, they haven't been close. Keaton has the bigger game. I mean, he's a bigger server. He's more capable of stepping in and crushing ground strokes. He's got some better touch. And he just seems to have boundless energy. Kareich is someone who's is well, an excellent he's, athlete. He does the work at it. You just constantly see the guy jumping rope and getting stretched out and working on his body work. Kieran just, just seems to all happen naturally. We're on for five hours today, so please, I hope these guys, as a matter of fact, I saw both of these guys watching the ladies' final. So we've got something to live up mm -hmm. to here. A lot to live up to. Oh. 
another man who had a chance to win three in a row, Jim Curry. I don't recognize. Look, Look at that hair. hair. Look at the hair. He speaks French. It's annoying how comfortable he is here now. <laughs> Courier won back to back and then Sergi Bruguera in a five setter. Scott Courier chance for three in a row. Well, there's that Courier backhand. To me, without question, his biggest weapon. A couple minutes ago, he looked in trouble his first service game. Now he's got three break points here. Oh. If Gustavo Kirchner attacks John, as he did, he played very impressively against Ferrero. If he attacks the same way against Carreccio, how does that impact well, what, what I would recommend, if I were Croatia, just not to go for a winning shot. I mean, make him volley. He's a capable volley, but he's not at nearly as confident. Gets that start you want you talked about. And that's what all great play court players do. They hit with just enough depth. Uh, their opponent seems a little shaky as we see people starting to prepare for rain, which is ugly news here. Umbrellas starting to go up to dare them to go for too much. And here's Courage. We talked about how little he played this year. And he really hasn't had many great results to speak of. This is where it's all come together for him. Few slight raindrops starting to fall, which was not part of the plan today. But again, it it's is there, a, it? yeah, it's it's always a possible part of the plan. Courage is struggling with the wind there, and that chip just had nothing on it. That's trouble for you come in in a shot like that against these guys, forget about it. Umbrellas and hats starting to get that Capriati tape ready. Yeah, although the skies are actually uh, not very dark, so whatever is passing over does not look like it will be intense. Same grunt. Yeah, Rarely do you see Croatia miss hit backhands that poorly. It looks like things may be held up here. Croatia walking to the chair to talk to the umpire, Cedric Morier of France. <laughs> Cedric says play, and Alex says no. <laughs> Somehow I have a feeling they won't default him. Now they bring a referee on the court. And he'll say, please, please play, Alex. Pretty um, please. <laughs> unlike what we see at the other slams, that generally they will play through a light a drizzle. De definitely here. Does it count, Alex says, if it's also too windy to play our best tennis? Mm -hmm. Stefan Franson is the tournament referee on court right now. Of course, this is also a love 30 game right now for Courage. Well, he, he got that break, and he doesn't want to throw it back away. Most of the rain that we've had during the two weeks has been of this sort of variety. It's just been what the, what the Brits refer to as spitting, and there have been some 
stoppages of between five and ten minutes, but with a very little play substantially delayed. This is when it's really disappointing, though, when you wake up in the morning, the sun's out, mm -hmm. there's not a cloud in the sky. You think, what a great day to play tennis. This is the perfect way to end the tournament. We just had the women's final, this incredible match yesterday. Now we're going to come and do it again today. And then all of a sudden, five minutes of three, the clouds start coming in. And we're already, it's, what is it, 320? And we're already wondering what the heck's going on here. And, uh, just over three hours ago at the noon hour here in Paris on Sunday, it was 72 degrees and bright sunshine. There was not a cloud in sight. Well, apparently they are going to get back out there, which is good news. Rachel made his point. Um, if nothing else, he got a chance to regroup. And, and t basically, Ted, tell himself, look, it's bad out there. It's windy. I hate this conditions, but I'm, this, this is the way it is. What would he do at Wimbledon? <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll see if he even shows yeah. up. It's, of course, he and his Spanish compatriots chose not to do last year on our show. Yeah, yeah. To, uh, not play at Wimbledon again this year. Knowing my luck, they'll show up this year. See, last year we, was, mm -hmm. we had to play them in Davis Cup, so instead they're training on clay and running mountains. Karicha at love to Now what they want the Wimbledon committee to do is simply go by the rankings. That they've gone out there and played for 12 long and hard months and that they have no right or business tinkering with the seedings. As the other three slam tournaments all do which is why you see perennially pete sampras here seated one or two coming in all oh, two big serves and i think in this case it's it's an argument that wimbledon wimbledon should let uh let the players win is this the porsche serve speed 109 miles per hour what gear is that in a poor second? Or? When you're driving? And I, I'm a, I have a lot of kids, Ted. Very, yeah, very true. mellow driver. I want to say hello to every one of you. He does have a tendency, though, like he did there, to pull up on his forehand. Oh, let his body go through it and cost him. Clip the tape and he's down break point. Over. I'm so sorry. This most disingenuous hands up yeah. in this in any sport. <laughs> Who's going to be the first tennis player to just say the heck with that? We've had that, Jimmy Connors. has passed. Sun threatening to break through and suddenly Karech's prospects in this game look better. Spirits up. 2-0 and an ad.
more and more trouble as the balls got shorter. As Guga just kept creeping and eventually ended up inside the baseline. And that's what's so tough about Clay, one of the many things. But you, you played an excellent yeah, yeah, point. You even got a break, a total miss hit drops inside the line. But once that ball started dropping around the service line, Guga took charge. He's got to keep that ball deep. That's the classic point, isn't it, John? Demonstrating the one word that you always talk about here, patience. That's a, that is what you would call a typical clay court point. Rachel's game is he doesn't have that ability, uh, the same ability as Guga to step in and to really hurt his opponent. He doesn't have a weapon. He, he, he's a very, very solid player. Good, better than good. Excellent all-around player. He's won some hardcore tournaments. Mm -hmm. He won a big event in Indian Wells last year, which is big for him. The ATP Championship a couple years ago. Pete Sampras, I think he had ma uh, a long match with Pete there. He pulled a Guga. Guga la last year won mm -hmm. beat Sampras and Agassi. And he got a little tentative there. It's cost him a great point. It, no insurance is complete. <laughs> Information is everywhere. It's that kind of world. But being financially successful isn't about getting information. It's about getting the right information from the right financial advisor. Morgan Stanley. Move your money. Get well connected. Back live in Paris. Oh, on the please. left is Gustavo Kiertin's older brother, Rafael. On the right, his, the only coach he's ever had. His boyhood coach, Larry Passos. At 13 years of age, Ted, Larry insisted. He said, you're two in a bag and stink. Mm -hmm. you, you've got to go to uh, one hander. And Guga said, you're nuts. I mean, you're crazy. This is what I've been playing with my whole life. You got three days to get ready for the tournament. That's it. And he's still hanging around. Mm -hmm. it's not typical for tennis. They usually toss you aside like some old lettuce. Uh, yep. But there's wonderful loyalty involved in the story. Yeah, okay. You see Karech's winning shot here. Gustavo Kiertin's father had asked Larry Passos to coach Guga when Guga was nine. Passos said no. The next year, Aldo Kiertin passed away suddenly while umpiring a match. And Larry Passos then decided to fulfill the father's request. Guga won his first time here. 
He said people in Brazil said, oh, now you need a big time yes. coach. You're a champion. And Guga has stayed with Larry Passos. So the mom there, Alice. Larry's hit with him 21 days in a row now. He's warmed him up and, and he's hurting. <laughs> he's <laughs> heavy ball. <laughs> he's very heavy <laughs> ground strokes. Sun's come out. Wind seems to have calmed down. No excuse for Krejci there to miss that second serve return. with Ferrero, but he's broken that out right away today. Yeah, Ferrero has some more wow. sting and some topspin on his shot, so maybe he felt it was trickier to pull this nice little number off, but he's he's working it big time already. <laughs> also, you had talked before about how Ferrero had grown up and played a lot in hard courts. He likes to stand near to the baseline, creates you farther back, so this gives Kirtan a more of a desire to hit that drop shot. To all in the first set of our men's final, an in-depth recap and analysis of the French Open at NBCSports.com. Just click on Tennis Central to get exclusive commentary on this men's final from Bud Collins at NBCSports.com. Back of the tape, skids first point to Correggio. When you get home, I want Kevin and Sean McEnroe to get you on the web. Check out this <laughs> movie, NBCSports.com. It's a little bit of a redesign. It's a sl I've checked it out here in Paris. It's a slick page. I may have to do some of my own analysis so I can give myself an excuse. Or that good early preparation oh, yeah. helps you to give yourself a little bit more time to survey the surroundings and come up with that angle as well as Kirton moves when you're moving back to the center of court which you have to do to, you're covering that whole area it's tough to get back and cover that Karecha serve enough through a long match here to hurt Kier? It, it, it is enough. I mean, he's developed a, a pretty big first serve. I mean, that had some good juice on it. That was about a, well, there's your Porsche there serve go. speed. And crank that one. I think my five-year-old Anna knows more about computers than I do, so he's going to have to help me. That's sad. We're not alone in today's World Cup. Live in Paris, the finals of the French Open. These are photographs never seen before that are helping scientists discover things they never knew before. About tigers, information about tiger domains, migration patterns and feeding habits. They're giving us a better picture of tiger behavior, and they're made possible with the help of ExxonMobil. Because unless we work together, tigers could be gone in a flash. To help, call 1-800-5-TIGERS. Technology has the power to fundamentally change the way your company does business. 
but only when you fully understand its true potential. Get behind the scenes on America's hottest new game show. Find it at NBCI.com slash weakest link. Alex Karecha, Gustavo Kierden on serve in the first set. Now we're back to that glorious day I was telling you about. dismantled Juan Carlos Ferrero here in Friday's semifinal match point and watch Larry Passos no. uh, he, he, that was the pain I'm talking about he, you know, I'm in pain we're in this together but I'm we we persevered through personally I like the, the, the mom quite a bit I mean she's got some serious energy <laughs> my mom is very stoic mm -hmm. and sat back never changes to this lady oh, yeah. here Wow, she is a bundle of energy. <laughs> well, their son has an infectious enthusiasm. It's wonderful to watch. I like him much better now, John. Over the winter, he cut the hair when he won the... Uh, I like the hair. Yeah, I like that he, wild stuff. When he won the Masters Cup in Lisbon last year, number one in the world. He had a short haircut. Now there are some athletes who are get our first look at the line and Kareja who is the ultimate sportsman on tour You sat here. Right, let's not go over there. Let's not push it. Well, he's won the award he's, a few times. He's given us an elbow a few times in the Davis Cup, <laughs> working the crowds. Oh. Brother, the new Davis Cup captain, oh, is at the U.S. Open, flushing medals today. I guess today is the first day you can buy some tickets. And they've also put up a big jumbo-sized television mm -hmm. to watch this final. So let's say hello to everyone there. Hopefully there's a lot of people Hopefully there. Hopefully <laughs> they're selling those tickets. Getting ready for a flushing medal, which is what it's called here in Paris. You say U.S. Open. What? That one was way too high, and Kareja has broken again. It stayed up there what seemed like an attorney, and Kareja had time to line this one up nicely. You saw Kirtan move and pulled it cross court for a 4 2 lead. Talking about the sportsmanship of Kareja, John, you sat here three years ago for the final that he played against Carlos Moya. Two very close friends. Karecha said that when he went into the final, 
He said, I felt like it was okay if I won, okay if I lost. Two days later, he said, I hurt. Yeah. Now he, he's yeah. got that second chance and realizes uh, this is an opportunity of a lifetime to win a Grand Slam title. Finally, we're calling each other's lines. They're such good friends as there's Luis Carreja, the yeah, father of Alex. We certainly enjoyed how Alex flattened that forehand out, smacked it up the line for a winner. Like stand points in a, with a little flourish. Cups that ball, opens up that face of the racket. Kareja has to watch in dismay. Such an important game here for Kareja. He would, what a boost it would be for him if he could just win a set from Kier. The way their past matches have gone. Definitely went for the surprise tactic, but didn't look very ready to hit this volley. He's never, he never got ready to hit it. He, he bent his knees almost after he hit the stroke. He's able to dictate any of these points is showing people he's here to win this. like that happen mm -hmm. just inexplicable <laughs> so a chance for Kirtan to get the break back when you're so thankful about getting a nice, easy point. You've built this lead, you're in the match. You don't want to let this first set slip away. You watch Kareja's pace of play here and you can sense why he's played the longest match here. Five hours and 31 minutes. There's a 98 on route to his finals. 
Uh, oh, over round four round. hours. There she goes. Four hours her first round match this year. Zabaleta. But Karachip, they say, from Spain this year, even more fit right now than he has been in the past. And he's always been one of the fitter players. gave someone your business you got something in return service respect in a sense that you were valued at Siebel we make application software that lets you make customers feel cared for again a lot of companies use our technology companies you know and like it can work for your company too Siebel good service is good business what I like about the job is that we provide objective research about companies. Prudential said in no uncertain terms, if you mean sell and you're saying hold, say sell. If you mean buy and your rating is hold, then say buy. So forget this mealy mouth, mumbo jumbo, political speak type of research. Take a stand, be objective and balanced and make investors money. Just how do you get the best vacation bang for the buck? Find it at NVCI.com slash travel. Oh, oh, nice. oh, you don't see the clay quarters change shoes that often during a match. Here's Guga, first set going right to a new pair. And here's Guga's year and the remarkable record on clay, including three championships. That has allowed him to remain the number one ranked player in the world coming into this event. He's lived up to that once again in the finals. We used to have a player that, uh, by the name of Cliff Richie, who's the number one American, but he switched sneakers, uh, as, a, as I like to call them, three or four times in a match. He sweated so really? much. Just for that, for, because of perspiration. Perspiration. Wow. <laughs> He'd have a suitcase with him, too, for mm -hmm. his shirts. Imagine if you go through... Mm -hmm. Sneakers that fast. Now, most players, or I should ask, do they mostly wear new pairs for each match at the Grand Slam? Not, not a brand new, rarely. Uh, some guys have. You know, Jimmy Connors used to. Oh. Uh, I, I heard Michael Jordan did when he, yeah, when he played basketball right. and maybe when he plays again. <laughs> I don't know about you, Ted, but when you pull a new pair of tennis shoes or set her out of the box, you feel a little stiff. Yeah, right exactly. in the middle there. With a practice, you're saying. Yeah, a couple of practices. Practice. Right. It doesn't take too long. Get them just right. Mm -hmm. They may have been... I had occasions where was, they were my lucky shoes, lucky sneakers. But they're getting too old. <laughs> but you want to hang in there as long as you can, and then finally you realize, hey, I'm just not, I just don't have my footing. I'm just going to have to make a change. That's why I was surprised that Guga let his hair grow back. You're talking about superstition, because many athletes at this level are superstitious. Cuts his hair, beats Sampras and Agassi, ends up number one in the world. Well, he could just look at the French then. He's got those wild mm -hmm. locks working when he wanted to. He'll cut, it, he'll cut it at the Masters at the end of the year. There's Kuga with that ability to step inside the baseline. And it's 
just seems so easy for him. He just generates a lot of pace in that wiry body. He's bigger than you think. He's just about 6'3". He generates a surprising amount of pace. Down taunt. I can't think of a more flexible limber player in recent memory. Limber looking memory. player. Right. Uh, and Michael Chang, for example, who's a, you'd think be tight. He's got so many muscles, muscles on muscle. He's extremely mm -hmm. flexible. to clip the tape. So, Uga holds for four all. Terracio just hoping it would come to his four, and then it does. Can't pull it off. The official French Open website with up-to-the-minute news, scores, and stats is frenchopen.org. Yes. And that org is presumably for organization or organism or a, <laughs> <laughs> or it's just it's, a yes. it's just a few letters. It's yes. Definitely not qualified. Yeah, yes, the what? <laughs> <laughs> it's a different. They call it a different address. Different domain. Yeah. Normally, the ORG is for a nonprofit organization. You see that? You learn something mm -hmm. new every day. Find that out, and I see Karach has got a good drop yeah. shot. Alex Carreche's mother. This has been a championship that Spain has come to expect to do well in over the last 10 years. And this year was a surprise. The Spanish women were all gone before the quarters. But the men upheld with Ferrero and Carreche both advancing. Hey, Ted, we got to get one of the camera. Look at this guy in the corner of the stands. Talk about Brazilians with natural energy. They Look at this guy here, this character. You ever remember him from Davis Cup? He must have struck rackets at Davis I think Cup. He's, I think he's Guga's mom's brother. <laughs> right, so you'd have a better seat, right? He's a fired up uh, countryman. generate the velocity and Kieran almost hits a backhand winner. Kareja knows if he can just get his racket on it, Kieran can't run that down. Clay court players are much, much better volleyers than they used to be. We see the good success there, but both players when they've come into net. I believe it was Michael Russell also during this Championship was telling us how in his travels he'd see the clay court players line up one after another practicing their drop shots. And you don't practice it. You're never going to have enough time to pull it off. It's a good play. 
That should be a hint, hint to all the other players that suck. Americans, for example, work on the drop shot on clay. This guy is uh, loving every minute of it. Can you get a coaching violation from up there? <laughs> I've never seen a happier guy in the last row of the stadium. We're <laughs> 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 back live to Paris. On TV, everyone can hear you scream. Fear Factor premieres Monday on NBC. Uh, Jack, the lip ring is caught on my braces. Don't move. Call someone? I'm not using my minutes. Just use them. I'll call after eight when my rates go down. That's four hours away. Three and a half. Don't be so dramatic. Hey, she's young. Maybe her next boyfriend will have Voice Dream's whenever minutes. The most whenever minutes, only from Voice Dream. Mm. This happens to me all the time. At Mobile on the Run, we're out to change the way you think about convenience stores. Mobile on the Run. Fast, fresh, friendly. News Channel 2, where the news comes first. The 2001 French Open from Roland Garros is brought to you by Lincoln, American Luxury, and by Sun America, the retirement specialist. Except for that little two-minute sprinkle we had earlier in this set, it's been the kind of day that makes you look at your partner and say, why are we leaving here tomorrow? Get ready for Wimbledon in two weeks. We are. Our coverage will begin here on NBC June 30th. The championships Wimbledon. That's Kirton serving at 4-5 first set. has lost nine straight sets on clay over four matches to Kirtan. Came into the tournament with a mediocre 15 and 8 record. And now, Karecha sits at love 30. Or below seven. Olympic sports fan. Two days in a row. Here's the World and Garros Championships. <laughs> now it's Google's turn now. To yeah, maybe he is very blessed. Palm lifted yes, the hand. This would have been triple set mm -hmm. point. Instead, he's still able to think he has a realistic chance of winning this game. Although knowing him, you can't count him out at love 40 either. Looks to be one of these afternoons in Paris where the players are going to have to deal with changing light, changing wind. Wind has just picked up again in the last moment or two. Rachel lost first round in Monte Carlo to Magnus Kvistesen, the veteran from Sweden. Moya beat him easily in Barcelona. Kirton beat him easily in Rome. 
The Ecuadorian Nicholas Lepenny easily in Hamburg. Well, that's the play court warm up season. Keep here, way, way behind the baseline. Can't smack those winners. A lot of kick on that top spin and some good depth gets Karecha to deuce. And Karecha says, now it's my time. Best of five. That fitness will pay off. A lot tougher proposition to beat old Alex. Who would be, be one of the older men Ted, he'd win this at 27 years of age. Right, Here we go. Last is second ace. It's a nice height at 6-3. Allows him to come up with that angle. Never say die. Well, Guga may be thinking it's last Sunday and he's looking at a better version of Michael Russell, a guy that runs down everything. Karecha out now guessed the first time. That time, Kirton sort of gave that away. Karecha still hit a very tough shot. the drop shots back to net there is a Spaniard on tour of moderate results Albert Portas who's earned the nickname the drop shot dragon Guga may threaten him on this one before Portas he led the led the entire circuit in drop shots so. <laughs> Portas looking to make a name for himself. He did win Hamburg. He mm -hmm. won a big warm-up event. Lost here in the first round. Couldn't follow it up. To, to Greg Ruzetsky. <laughs> that was a surprise. And Guga holds the five all. Take a look at the fastest serves. Porsche's fastest serves of this French Open, and who but 18-year-old Andy Roddick stands atop that list. Ruzetsky amongst them. Wayne Arthur's got one of the great lefty serves. You'll see that at Wimbledon. And it, it appears that we'll see Andy Roddick as well. Andy. That, that's good news. Very good news. And stories building. Capriati mm -hmm. going for the third leg of a Grand Slam. It's still amazing to even say this. And Roddick really making a name for himself. <laughs> And a name that's been a little forgotten during this time of the year, but Jan Michael Gamble, the American who made the quarters last year. He's had some excellent results. That's well done. Very well done. Just held that backhand for what appeared to be an eternity. And when he saw Kierton in that position, just going to slice a backhand, in he came. This is what makes viewing a clay court match more interesting now, because guys do finish points at net. They do hit big serves. And, of course, they have the solid groundies. And there's their points here, as opposed to a bang or war, a shot. War of right, attrition. Right. <laughs> Used to see Borg play a Harold Solomon, and he'd be cramping in the middle of the first set. He just, just couldn't, couldn't end the point. If it's windy, anytime you're on a tennis court, it's as windy as it is right now. You've got to watch the ball extra carefully. 
right into the strings. And then if you miss the ball that badly, you make it immediately known to anyone watching that that is why you missed it. Borg with that amazing run, six out of eight, only losing to Panada twice. And it's after that, you see, just to get even three, only two players there, Vlander, Lendl. Borg here remarkably to be six times a finalist and six times the champion. Uh, Jimmy Connors, for example, in 74, Ted, he won the uh, he won all three majors, mm -hmm. and, and he wasn't permitted to play here at the French because he was playing a thing by the name of Team Tennis. And that's too bad to see what would have happened. That was the year Borg won his first. Could, because he did Harris. beat Borg once on clay at the U.S. Open in 76. champions that you saw on that list except for board they all got to another final at least one other final and didn't win that's what board so spectacular and Kierton's trying to today go three for three in finals here Get it off the line, although they will take a look. And yes, Pareja has held. So, Gustavo Kierton will serve to send his first set to a tiebreak. Sun America can help. Just ask your financial advisor. Sun America, the retirement specialist. The romance, the beauty, the world of Ralph Lauren. A new way to shop, just to click away. Polo.com. Download monologues, jokes, even a virtual J. Find it at NBCI.com slash tonight. Defending champ Gustavo Kierden has not been able to control this first set the way he has against Carreccia in the past, the way he did in his semifinal against Juan Carlos Ferrero. And the set to be decided here. Here, hoping to push it to a tie break. Gustavo Kierden at one hour here, which is, John, I think that's probably just what Carreccia wants, to make this a grind. Exactly what he wants. The longer, the better. He'd be happy if every set took an hour. Gustavo has had the tougher road without question to reach this final. Does he look like he has a groin injury, though? And that's what he's telling me. When, when I see him, that he's hurting, and that's why he won't be able to play a oh, Wimbledon. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that groin is just... I don't know how he's doing it. And how he's playing. I'll tell you what I find amazing 
about this, these two guys, Ted, is how much they love being here at this tournament at, at the stadium. I mean, they, they were, these guys were here all day yesterday. Just hanging around, watching ladies, hit a few balls, have lunch, hang out five, six hours. Mm -hmm. Is that uncommon? The day before a championship? To me, you, know, you get your hit in and you're, you're off. Try to focus in, stay away from here as, as, to me as much as possible. Shows you what I do. Foul pass. Well, the one thing Karecha could not draw on there's an awful lot of uh, help from his countrymen because Guga has had a remarkable record against the Spanish Armada. Kirton has won 12 of the last 13 matches he's played against Spaniards. Courageous shot. Well, it's doubly annoying because everyone in the crowd, you heard them go, oh, look, let out a groan like that miss hit was going out, and then see it smack on both lines. This is incredible. That Kirton's record's that poor. Mm. <laughs> How's that even possible? Well, that... Let's hope it continues because well, it'll that... be more of an exciting match, I feel, if... It, if Courageous wins this. Well, that goes to my question. I've often asked you, and should go to Larry Passos, do you practice tie breaks? Guga looks like he would need to. Do you practice drop shots? Let's practice some tie breaks. Such a good player would do well when things got tight. Let's see. Well, so nice. much more dangerous when he steps in to those balls inside the baseline. Wind whipping and then a few dark clouds hovering overhead. more conservatively though 10 in these type of conditions so it's, it's difficult for the players know what to do both players know I'm far better off I get the ball deep but you're sort of afraid to really try to go to close to the lines Please just hit it to my back end more. I love the back end. That one I can step in on. And Karecha wins both points on Kirton serve. <laughs> it's 
see that. He's played Kieran enough to know that Jim stands way back on the return, so bit of a surprise tactic. Hit that kick out to Kieran's backhand. As simple as one, two, three. It's like a right-handed McEnroe. I didn't have that kick, so I tried to get a little can opener out while the lefty. It is difficult to d disguise that, that kick, sir. I mean, it's pretty apparent it's coming. So what you have to do is try to, as you see it coming, move in. Put the line. The line's solid. I'm as solid as a rock on that back end side. Solid in this breaker so far. It's 4-1. He just knows I have to hit a reasonable volley to win this point. And slice serve is more difficult to read. Because you can throw that in exactly the same place as a, as a flat. Kick, you don't have that luxury. Who's that this time over the top? Court lost a lot of its clay. Kuga still able to feel that ball. The top spin lob winner. That is indeed a a view of the artistry that he exhibits on this court. That was Agassi-like, taking that ball off the baseline. It's almost in their subconscious so they can pull off shots like that. It was an extremely difficult play. You know, be they Brazilians or be they Frenchmen, they are right now all cheering for Guga, serving a 2-4 in this first set tie break. I think the only guy that hates wind more than Kirchner is Kirtan. Wicked conditions in this tiebreaker. Wow, a layer of the Terre Batu is now being tasted by some of the folks seated just behind the umpire. talk about the wind and you say who would like it maybe Agassi because he's used to it just it's, it's no one likes it as your level of play just because some players are able to push through it and not let it bother them the way these two guys historically we've seen them struggle with it more than a Agassi a Jimmy Connors when he was playing a V-lander who was a very very solid player in awkward conditions It's a lot easier for Mount Pierre, but if I were Croatia, I would have let that overhead drop. Does that ball look like it was going wide? He wasn't able to put it away, and eventually Kieran was able to pull that point out. 1-1. One, 
More serve for Karecha at 5-3. And first of all, it's a tough shot to pull off in the wind, and it was very, very close to the sideline. Of course, you're so juiced up and so pumped up, two points away from winning. This is the first set I've won in five matches against this guy. I have it. I could win this thing. Still in a commanding position at 5-3. Oh, never seen a ball stopped by the wind before. Unbelievable conditions there. Kieran's ball was as if it hit a brick wall. <laughs> Look at this. This ball. It was about, he thought he was going to go on the baseline. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Barely made the service line. <laughs> Nasty is all you can say. Well, Karecha right now is a point away from loving it. Yeah, that's right. First time he ever could say, hey, this is, this is for me. The first of what could be three set points. So Karecha does keep one piece of history going. He extends Karecha's poor tiebreak record. Exxon presents Then and Now. A precocious Jennifer Capriati made a stunning debut at the French Open in 1990, reaching the semifinals at age 14. The tennis world anticipated her winning this tournament soon after. Instead, she succumbed to pressures, falling off the tour a few years later. But now, with two consecutive Grand Slam titles this year, Capriati has once again climbed to the heights of women's tennis. A mere flicker. Once, that was all the hope that remained for the tiger. And while this species is still one of the world's most endangered, hands from all ends of the earth have begun to kindle the fire breathe life into her flame. We at ExxonMobil are proud to play a part in this global effort to help keep the tiger's fire burning brightly. To find out how you can make a difference, call 1-800-5-TIGERS. In a sea of sameness, how do you pick a financial advisor who's right for you? Do you want one who works for the biggest company? Or the smallest? Do you want one with the most impressive office? or the most elaborate website? Or do you simply want one who listens to you like you are the only investor in the world? Raymond James, you first. It devours roads, dances through corners, slides effortlessly into your budget. Announcing 0% financing on every single 2001 Lincoln, low lease rates, and Lincoln will even make your first payment. The LS from Lincoln. We are live in Paris, the men's championship at Roland Garros at Alex Karecha has taken the first set from the defending champion, Gustavo Kierden. Now after a chance for everybody from following a grueling set to stand and stretch, the second set begins on Guga's serve. It's the best I've ever seen Kareccia play under these difficult conditions. And it shows in those stats there. I mean, they're getting half their serves in. But the thing that is amazing is that Kareccia has been able to hit more winners and unforced errors. That's unusual. Some, some statement about his tennis in these conditions. I mean, part of that first set was okay, but particularly the end of it was uh, was horrendous for the players. It, it's like it's what I alluded to a few minutes ago. I mean, Karecha knows the only guy that really hates it more than him is, is the guy he's playing. 
And it's helping her. Because here is, 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 he, he doesn't have that same positive vibe that he normally has out there. Obviously trying to make history, win this for a third time, and put himself higher up in the record books. He's starting to rush here. He's, he's not comfortable with himself right now. A very lackluster game for Kirtan. And Karecha opens the second set with a break. Well, coming up next on NBC, a preview of golf's greatest championship, the 101st U.S. Open. And then starting Thursday at 3 Eastern, four days of U.S. Open coverage with Tiger Woods defending his championship and looking for an unprecedented fifth straight major. And the coverage round one will begin Thursday at 3 Eastern on NBC. What do you think of that? If you win four in a row, right. tennis or golf, if you win four in a row, is that a slam? To me, either one is is is, is a dream. I mean, what, what it, technically in tennis, you have to win all four in the same year. Right. So same in, They say the same in golf. But... Uh, I'd like to have that. I, I would have liked to have that problem. <laughs> Please, let me deal with that. He'll probably win them all in the same year anyway, the way he's going. Mm -hmm. so it'll be a mute point. Yeah. Yeah. Rachel, early in 1999, was number two in the world. Had a mediocre 99, dipped all the way down to 26. Has gotten himself back up to a top 10 position and a real real shot at this and she was a victim of one of your strongest stands of the, the incredible demands on the players in the course of a tennis season now he played so much tennis in 98 that he lost his strength he had a virus that he couldn't shake his play uh, deteriorated badly in 99. To the point where when we saw him here, it looked like this win would have knocked him over. <laughs> now this past January, while the tennis world was in Australia, Carreccia didn't go, and he went to a ski resort in the south of Spain where many of Spain's finest athletes, many of their Olympic athletes trained. And he spent six weeks there in a rigorous program and that skiing and what else was he doing? <laughs> <laughs> Double lattes. No, but it, it supposedly left Karachi in the best shape of his career. It skips off the line for a winner. He, he seems like someone who recognizes that he's been given this great opportunity one more time. He got to the finals, played more. Then he had these health problems. Now, he's come to play. I mean, I never got that feeling with Moya, that he was really, had this intense desire to win. Now you sense it. Yeah. And it's such a drastic difference in 48 hours where on Friday, Guga was in command of the match throughout. Ferrero looked despondent. Well, you're always trying to learn something about these sports. And I bet you him watching Ferrero was a lesson in don't give off such negative body language. Karecha found himself down in all three of the sets against Grosjean. The crowd was just itching to get into it to help Grosjean get to the finals. He was able to persevere in three straight sets. And not a good job out there. He tripped himself. knows the moment he hit that, that that wasn't going to get the job done. And Guga gets this game to deuce.
There is that impressive looking back at once again. Uh, uh, doesn't seem to be breathing heavily, Kalecha. Totally composed, yeah. confident as, as, as I've ever seen him. No, that may well have been in, in that tight knit Spaniard group, John, your point about learning something. Kalecha may have watched Friday and found out what not to do. And he holds for two love now in the second set. And let's go to Bud Collins. This situation, fellas, is very reminiscent of 10 years ago with the underdog coming through in a dust storm, rain threatening. The underdog was Jim Courier. The favorite was Andre Agassi, but Andre couldn't hand the Sahara-like conditions. Well, perfect timing to bring up that point as we are joined now in our booth by none other than don't start speaking French no. two-time French Open champ bienvenue Jim Courier merci Ted nice to be here <laughs> what's the hair what you're, you you're going for the we're, Google we're, look we're jealous what are you talking about? <laughs> talking about why not that's right you have it you have that option <laughs> Jim, you've been watching from behind where Guga is serving. Your views of what you've seen from down there. Well, geez, the match has been a little bit ugly, frankly, so far. It's just windy down there. I don't know if you guys can notice it yeah. up here, but both guys look tentative to me. It's going to get better. I, mean, I feel like these guys are starting to break out of it. It was a very nervous first set for both players, I think. And, and um, kind of like boxers trying to feel themselves out a little bit, trying to see where the weaknesses are. But it's... It's nasty out there. Yeah, the conditions are brutal, really. I noticed you were in a hurry to get up here. Yeah, yeah. these lovely little confines. <laughs> Jim Courier joining us, and we'll come back. Second set live in Paris. Black rocket. Cute. How's it work? It's an e-business network platform made by Genuity. There used to be a company called BBN. Pioneered the internet back in 69. You were probably a hippie back then, huh? Hosting, access, security. It runs on this fiber optic stuff. Genuity's got a bazillion miles of it. Pretty freaky, huh? Hey, what are you doing? This is the network operations center. Bottlenecks are detected, firewalls are protected. Hey, that rhymes. Pop the clutch! This is where the business of e-business happens. Billions of dollars are exchanged in these servers. <laughs> It's that, that way. way, that way. It's it's this way. Wasn't that a fun trip? Hmm. What do you think? I got it. You sure? Because we can go again. I got it. You can do anything with the Black Rocket, the e business network platform from Genuity. Boxster S. Even heaven has its moments of hell. How about this for a flashback? <laughs> when Bud Collins was talking about 10 years ago and the changing look, the changing styles. Did you guys design those clothes, by the way? Or? I'm just jealous. I mean, I never got to wear the spandex under my pants, but <laughs> goodness gracious. 10 years ago. A little, the, little rain hat, delay. For, yeah. for, what was I doing? If you were winning, that's what you were doing. Yeah. That's okay. Wasn't concerned about the look. I was just trying to do that right there. Pump it up. Just a baby. And we see Karecha serving now. He's up a break. Second set. How did you get through the... As we talked about the players dealing with changing wind, changing light on a day like this. You just hope that you're mentally stronger than your opponent, really, is what it comes down to. Because it's going to be tough for both guys. See, Guga is one of these guys who always says he doesn't mind anything but wind. And today is one of those days where the wind is, is sporadic down there. It's not a consistent breeze. It's swirling a little bit. 
know, we've seen a couple guys whiff shots out there mm -hmm. in the final. I mean, that, these, these guys aren't going to miss unless the conditions are pretty rough. And you don't want to get psyched out about it. Guga sounds like, when talking to the press, he sounds psyched out about it. He sounds like, I, you know, I can play in anything but the wind. And that's exactly what, like, Kareja, he's thinking, hey, he's read about that, so mm -hmm. he's he's more juiced up, he's more confident. Yeah, it's a weakness, and you shouldn't show your hand to your opponents. step up and start taking those shots. He's had so many short balls in the first set where he just decided to stay back instead of stepping in like this and ripping it. He's got the shots. He's just got to use them a little better. You would never think nerves, would you? Not for guys one here twice. One here twice. It, it, he played great in the semifinals. I'm playing seniors doubles, and I feel some nerves, Ted. I mean, you go out and try to yeah, win at the French Open, you you're this close to doing it, I and mean, you're going to feel nerves. I think he's nervous in the beginning, but it, those are nerves that I expect to get out after the first couple of games. I expect these guys to kind of get into the swing of things and start playing with their own style, and, and just seems like Guga in particular is just still holding back. Well, he does have a chance here to level this second set. A couple break points for him. Very, very slow pace. Mm -hmm. We've been at an hour and a half. So Guga gets the break back for two all. There's a nice group to be amongst. Tony Traber, two-time champion. He's here doing commentary for Australian television. And I hear you're going to be uh, handing one of these fellows the trophy. Uh, yes, I am going to be giving Not out you, the trophy. Not you, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> giving out the trophy. It's quite an honor, actually. Talking about Guga, Jim, from your viewpoint, this is Karech's second time in a, in a final. Mm -hmm. How is he handling the moment, the stage? Well, I, I don't think that he's playing his best tennis by any means, but he's playing well enough to be winning right now. And I think that, that Alex is, if, if these guys are both playing their best tennis, I think Guga wins. So he knows that he's got to just stay in there and fight and scrap. And he's the veteran. He's going to do whatever he can. Very tough mentally. not going to let you get away with shots like that, that's for sure. Sometimes Gula gives it away too yeah, early. Krejci can run a lot of balls down. He's, he's, he's more than comfortable at net. He's, oh, sure. He's surprisingly effective. He's pretty complete as a player, really. He has good results on hard courts as well. He's played well on hard throughout his career. One of the few Spanish guys, actually, did to make that turn. You, you didn't know this, Jim, but he told me that just before, when I saw you in the locker room, mm -hmm. that his, when he grew up, now you tell me if you think this is true, he grew up saying that he wanted to win the U.S. Open. Wow. More than the French. Really? Well, you know, there's not something, something to be said for being different, isn't there? Yeah. Everyone in Spain wants to win this tournament. Right. I don't think he's telling El Pais, the national newspaper <laughs> in Madrid, I don't think he's telling him that, He wanted to win Barcelona. <laughs> I don't think so either. Live by the sword, you die by the sword. All count. But I'm glad to see Guga at least trying to get in there because these guys basically stand back on the baseline, hitting balls back and forth. It's starting to look like a 1987 or so, Lindell Vlander. 
want to see some winners every now and then. Should we get a tape of the Lendl V let's, let's one roll, too? Let's roll the moon ball. <laughs> He's starting to get pumped up. It's time to get going. He's waited long enough, thank you. Two fist pumps in a row. Four aces, two in this game. That's good. We got five hours. Mm -hmm. Hour thirty three. <laughs> hour thirty three minutes in. Mm -hmm. Two fist pumps in one game. That's good. That's good stuff. Richard, even though I won that point, I do not want to see Kirtan getting into the net like that on the short balls. Yeah, that's what Kirtan hasn't done in the first set. Richard likes him back there on the baseline. Well, just get the ball deeper. Yeah. It's simple to say from up here, but. around but maybe talking about winning the US oh, Open he's talking about when it was back at Forest Hills on the clay. That's right. <laughs> I mean that's <laughs> three years. That's what his yeah. reference was. That's, he's a sly character. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> and of course remember five years ago he had a match point yeah. against Sampras in quarterfinals. Amazingly Guga attempting to serve volleys called for a footfall. Second serve, serve on. And Guga holds on serve in the second. I was looking to protect what I have and to achieve some modest growth. I knew I lacked investment skills and I knew I needed professional assistance. Prudential gave me a good feeling that this guy or these people don't have an agenda of their own. There's a lot that I don't understand, but that's why I really lean more heavily on my advisor at Prudential. I'm impressed by their thoroughness and I'm impressed by their detail. I think I found the right people. Dad, I missed the bus. Really? The 911 Carrera, what only a Porsche brings to driving. Thanks, Dad. Tools to help your business better target audiences, design direct mailings, and effectively get new customers. Visit USPS.com. Live in Paris, the men's championship with John McEnroe and Bud Collins, Ted Robinson, and we're joined in the booth by Jim Courier, the two-time French Open champ. Watching Gustavo Kirton try to make it three of his own today. It was a beautiful day to start has become difficult to say the least. Overcast, strong wind.
Curry or American Tennis as John and I have you know, seen during the two weeks here seem to get a great jolt not just from Jennifer Capriati yesterday but Michael Russell Andy Roddick well a couple great stories Michael Russell used to practice with him when he was at the University of Miami I was living in Miami and just a scrapper and a grinder and, and uh, you know I was listening to you guys on the coverage watching him play against Guga and he's, he's really is a popular character and it was just awesome to see him play that well. It was a big moment, too. How in center court, and the number one player. Strong. He's like a mini you. That's what we were saying. That's what we were saying. Little Russell, a little yeah. bulldog. He's uh, just a little f extra four inches. It'd be sweet. <laughs> <laughs> He's feisty, that's for sure. And he, I mean, he had, he had Guga. It was the match was in his pocket. I, just maybe a little bit of experience lacking there to close the door. But Guga, after the match, drawing the heart of the that court. That was incredible. Wow, that was that was a moment. That was new. Yeah, that was a moment. You had a great moment, I think, when you won the second time, when you gave Johnny a little, gave Johnny a little, a little, little golf, golf club. That was, yeah. that was excellent. How could you not give props to Johnny? <laughs> That's a nice feel by Alex, though. Tough to do in the wind, actually. Oh, yes. I'm trying to play a little drop shot right over net there. You really have to judge the wind. See him give a little hop there, yeah, a little, little hop and body hope language. There, yeah. <laughs> a little bit of a hope. For those under the age of maybe 20, you're referring to Johnny Carson. Johnny Carson mm -hmm. was sitting right behind the court when I was playing in the final in 92 and couldn't help but not see him. And it was the last year that he was on mm -hmm. the air and he just rapped and such a part of such a part of the American fabric. And that presumably pumped you up. Yeah, right? I mean, absolutely. Remember, did you watch the other day when Agassi played and uh, <laughs> the ex-president came in, he was up 6-1 and then all of a sudden... Oh, uh, what a whammy that was, huh? I mean, I, I was, I was <laughs> for coming maybe up, a game or two, right? Well, I mean, you can't I let it go that far. I don't know. I was coming over here. I'm coming over to give the trophy. I'm sitting at home, going, "Gosh, you know, I played Andre ten years ago in the final. Wouldn't it be sweet to give him the trophy here?" <laughs> you know, I want to give him the trophy, and all of a sudden, Bill gives him the whammy. <laughs> Just he, got to, Bill. he got to him first. <laughs> it's not Bill. <laughs> Okay, Rachel. Rachel holds for three all. And the second set, no different than the first. It's just a grind on the tear bat two. All right, the Aflac trivia question. The only time a 13 seed reached and won. The men's singles final of Roland Garros. Answer shortly. Matt. We have to give that some thought for a second. You, you come up with an answer yet? No idea. looking backhands in the business. Both of these guys are capable of taking that yeah. backhand down the line for clean winners. I and mean, this is just, that's firm when he steps into this one. Just crush. I think it's a new shot in men's tennis. Kid, that hits down, a, the down the line. Saffin hit, hits that really well. These two. Andre's always had that shot. Andre's always been able to step in with his two-hander and rip it down the line. And it's getting harder and harder for guys to play like I used to play, which is play inside-out forehands in the backhand corner, because guys will step up and take it down the line and take you out of your, your comfort zone. Agassi showed a lot of other players. You can stand at the baseline and do that, and then you can see guys like these oh, two do it sometimes. That was unheard of. I think it was unheard of 10 years ago. I think 20 mm -hmm. years no, ago. No, for sure. It's just another part of the arsenal. Everyone's just getting more and more complete. Oh, yeah. oh. And a 
natural defense I, I guess the guy who's standing there hitting balls to it from the backhand corner like Andre used to do when he was younger all the voluntary guys that's defense the players will come up with down the line take him out of his comfort zone just like that Ted, I think Gug is coming to life a little bit here he's starting to hit out a little bit more Oh, well, that's what he said he had to do yeah. against Ferrero, and I think I think you see that he's decided this is what I, I need to I need to do this. Do you think he didn't feel that way coming into the match? I, I think he thought quite possibly he was going to run through this. I mean, I think he did, but I I, I think the conditions took through him for a loop. Mm. I mean, you, you were here this morning. I, mean, I think you got up before two or three, right? You, you got sure. Up okay. Yeah. Went for a jog okay. the whole day. Right. Right. Come on. <laughs> but it was a beautiful day. It was sunny. It was, it was very pleasant. It's become nasty out there. A 12 o'clock start would have been just splendid. I don't know. A lot of viewers back in the States that want to get up that early, though. All right. We're still on serve in a second. It offers four tons of hauling capacity, has three rows of seating, and most amazingly, is quite easy to carry. Announcing 0% financing on every single 2001 Lincoln, low lease rates, and Lincoln will even make your first payment. Navigator from Lincoln. It's staying focused on the ultimate goal. It's never wavering from a rigorous, time-tested investment strategy. It's knowing a highly disciplined approach can result in a winning performance. The American Century Value Funds. It's what we call American Dedication. American Century Investments. Contact us or your investment professional. talking about if we get injured and miss work we're covered for things like lost pay and other expenses with this with what Aflac! plus they pay you cash great huh who does aflac aflac without it no insurance is complete nbc's coverage of the french open men's championship live in paris that's it. That's it. These two are involved in a, what is turning into a classic clay court war. Rachel took the first set in a tie break, surge now at 3 4 in the second. of Oz weather has passed at least for the moment. The wind has died down as we look at the Affleck trivia question. And the survey says Andre Agassi, two oh, years ago. Oh. I never guessed that one. A five-setter. Now, I know you felt a lot more confident on your forehand side than backhand, but if you look at, I mean, you have to say Craig's got a better backhand than forehand, right? Mm -hmm. Why does he run around backhands? Well, he can get he can get more uh, whip on his forehand. He's got a heavier forehand than his backhand. His backhand kind of penetrates more. Like, so he flattens out more on his backhand, it seems like. Or is he just like a nervous tick? He's just uh, bouncing, so he just, just, why not? Yeah, I'm over in that corner. Might as well smack a forehand. I, I think he just feels like he can create a little more whip with his forehand, maybe a little more control. Early on, these guys didn't want to hit forehands. Either of them didn't seem like they were hitting backhand to backhand. Almost like they were just having a little cross-court drill out there. Okay. There is a young woman who's in some story halfway to a tennis grand slam and here today to watch the men's championship. 
such a good feel. That's a feel-good story. <laughs> Unbelievable it really story. It really is. But still, you know, Jim and I were with her last night a little bit, Ted, and we, mm -hmm. we were trying to get her. To, we couldn't get her even a glass of champagne for her. They, they wouldn't serve us anything. <laughs> So your yeah, reputation yes. precedes you, huh, John? Yeah. <laughs> Blame me. <laughs> I, I don't think that she's even really aware of what she's in the process of doing right now. I think she's so immersed in it, she just doesn't seem really aware of the implications of her, what she's doing, the story that she's been writing this year. That may be better. I think it is better. Well, her words were so heartfelt up on the, uh, on the podium yesterday, and she said, this is a dream, and I just don't want to wake up. Yeah. Halfway to a slam. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, I was in, in New York last week and, and out, and you hear people, you see it on TV, and you hear people talking about Jennifer. They, they don't off. know that I'm there. They don't know that I have any connection whatsoever to her. And everyone just has so much admiration for what she's done, the, the way she's fought through the, the ups and the downs and, and is now playing the best she's ever played. I mean, it's just, it's really. Fittest by it, far. It's magic. Everything's yeah. come together. Yeah. And now, rain again beginning to fall here on court. Philippe Chaprier. Could anyone in their wildest of dreams have predicted that to happen? No. And she loves playing on grass. She's going to be uh, at Wimbledon and be, be going got, as the favorite. She's got to be the favorite. I mean, she's got Hingis's number right now. <laughs> I don't wish I had that, had that shot, but I sure wish I had that inside out forehand. Yeah, okay. so it's, it's, it's lovely combine, to watch him up here. Combine you, your volley with that approach shot. I think you, I think you're gonna you got to show you got to show me how to do that sometimes. The forehand? I've been trying for 42 years. <laughs> got to get you off the continental grip. <laughs> That's the first step. <laughs> She won't be able to follow it anymore. <laughs> Can't have everything, right? No. Where would you put it? Ruge hits his fifth ace. You get a feeling that uh, this is another tie break written all over it. <laughs> I hope you're not looking at me because I have no idea. <laughs> Awful close. All counts. Part of being blessed, right? Yeah. You just have to do it. I mean, the guys are too fast. You, you do have to play close to the line, I think. You know, courageous. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we better slow down here and think this over. All the umbrellas are out now. We, we've seen this actually happen relatively few times this this last two weeks. But it's amazing how fast they get going. Oh, they're ready. They come prepared. There's nothing you can do about that serve. I've always thought that that's Guga's go-to serve on a big point. He likes the wide one, which is really the low percentage serve, but it seems to work for him. Yeah. Yeah, did it ever. So... We stay on the 5 4 through the second set. The 2001 French Open from Roland Garros is brought to you by Prudential Financial, a rock solid leader in financial services. Choose Prudential Financial to help you grow and protect your wealth. And by Siebel. Siebel. Good service is good business. Well, we're back live in Paris where apparently the Parisians have just decided at a certain point every day they want their version of the seventh inning stretch. And this is it. They do the way. <laughs> it's been almost two hours. They need to stretch. Yeah, they're they're into together. it now. <laughs> they haven't figured out the players want them to stop so they can play, have they? Well, yesterday, 
I forget the precise score, but it was something like 8-7 third set or 9-8 third set in the women's championship when they decided to do the wave. And it's like, just give us 30 seconds. Uh -huh. This is what they're saying to the players. Just give us 30 seconds and then we'll stop. We pay good money for our <laughs> tickets. The end, the end that we're on actually started clapping. That was a time to stop. And they kept going all the way around until they got to us. Do the fleas. Starts back to play. Well orchestrated by Mr. McEnroe in the booth. <laughs> right, right. And we are joined. Of course, the voice you're hearing is that of Jim Currier, two-time French Open champ. So we said to Jim, come on and do the second set with us. Little did he realize that was, you know, an hour and 15 minutes. Keeping me out of the rain, though. Seems to have gone away for the moment. The good news for the players is on the horizon, we can see some nice blue sky. Mm. Looks like the wind is actually calming down a little bit, too. away from leveling this match. Just hanging in there, hanging in there, and finally just bang. So that was a good point. Both those guys were ripping. Maybe with the wind dying down, they're starting to feel like they can take a better cut at the ball. The level of play will come up. It should be exciting for us to watch and view this. He should have gotten that at least back in the court. Yeah. That's when you go, God, I hope it's going out. <laughs> Please. It's triple set point. Authority that you talked of, that Google was starting to hit. Mm -hmm. The you had an answer. That's a, that's a reply for a good shot. That's a, that's the play that I think Google should be looking to make. Put some pressure on Alex. Because Alex, when the wind stops, he's not going to miss a whole lot. He just had a better answer on that one. We talked earlier before you came, Jim, about how fit uh, Karachi was. He went to mm -hmm. the mountains. You were known as one of the fittest guys. What did, what did you you ever head to, head to the Call mountains and? Or you just hung in Florida and just yeah got that tan up. Yeah, I worked on my tan like yours. Um, <laughs> I think the mountain training actually pays off, but I thought it was impossible to practice in the mountains due to the altitude. I stayed away from it. A bad miss there. So give us a typical day well, then, well, you know, when you were at your peak. What I want to point out is that Karicha, the way he plays is similar fashion to the way I play as a grinder. You have to be in better shape than most guys, and you have to make the special effort, because otherwise you're just not going to be able to last one hour and 57 minutes for nearly two sets on clay. For me, a typical day was four hours on the court and another hour to hour and a half off court of either weights and running or some kind of combination. Excellent hitting. And Karachi was 
staring at the losing the set. Instead, he's back to five all. When you hit a shot like that, why bother running around that? No, no reason to. Well, don't forget our Wimbledon coverage on NBC begins Saturday, June 30th. Pete Sampras back in his home. We'll look for Wimbledon number eight. Uh, for you Is that all here. just Wimbledon <laughs> number eight? I think we should have a Courier McEnroe jam at Wimbledon this year, right? Why don't both of you guys come prepared for that? Well, we are available. <laughs> we are available and probably not expensive. <laughs> <laughs> not take take the probably out. <laughs> Grip on the handle of Karech's racket. He's not going to choke up. <laughs> I was actually watching, thinking about that from the, the crowd, thinking he's, he's probably the only guy out there that only grips it just, just for the one hand. Even the guys with the one-handers, like Guga, will have it gripped all the way up. I'm trying to figure out why Alex does that. Conservationalist, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Tough year two years ago. Bounce. And a sudden a little danger for Kirtan. Miss hit about three balls each. Right. And then he just clocks one up the line for a winner. 15 32, five all. No fear. Oh. That's when you start wondering where the gods are in this match. Big point. Oh, that cool. Coach in dismay. Now a break point for Karecha. John, when Karicha first came on tour, he never used to come over his backhand. It was only a slice. He was playing a little bit like, like a typical old Spanish player. He sliced everything. Now his backhand is such a weapon. See if player, as he matures over time, he's just really coming to his own in that shot. The guy that he was top when he was growing up was Sanchez, Emilio. And right. he, 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 he never did come over his backhand. And that cost him eventually. Spanish players, John, early in the 90s, I think they all I realized that, that they had to start coming over their backhands if they wanted to succeed on another surface. That's just, that's right back payback on Deuce there. Well, that's also when they had the Olympics in Barcelona. Mm -hmm. They built the facility, built some hard courts. They started playing on another surface. It paid off big time. Would you say, both of you, is Karecha much fitter than Guga? No, I guess no, no. I wouldn't say he's much fitter. It's not a huge edge for him as this match wears along. He's got this uh, just the energy that's, it's, it's, it is a gift. <laughs> Naturally has a lot of energy and doesn't put a lot of that. Uh, he, he hits so loose. He's loose. Right. Guga doesn't spend energy when he's on the court like other guys do because he is loose and he's long with his leverage. He doesn't have to swing as hard as other guys because he's got such long arms. Oh, not again. 
Coach Horatio thought he had something going. Luka got too bad. The rules for making money have changed. Pinstripes, wingtips, that's not how it works anymore. Anybody can be the next big wheel, as long as they put their money in a better place. Welcome to the new Old Boys Club. Less old, less boys. Morgan Stanley, move your money, get well connected. Ah, the usual gentleman? Well, perhaps for Emmett, but uh, I'll be having tea. Oh. Well, I'm the designated driver. Not so quick, friend. I'll be having the tea, as I'm to be the driver. Deny yourself if you like, but I'll be a driver. Boxster. What only a Porsche brings to driving. talking about if we get injured in this work we're covered with things like lost pay and other expenses with this with what Affleck! plus they pay you cash great huh who does Affleck. Affleck. without it no insurance is complete this is where Guga thinks he's blessed and things like this always seem to happen to him here at the French Open. Thank you very much. To save that for maybe a slightly bigger point later on. Well, that game was pretty big for him. Now huge. Karachi trying to get another set to a tie break. got other ideas. You don't see that off in the inside out backhand. Return winner. That was what Jim was talking about. It just seems to come out of nowhere. He doesn't seem to put a lot of effort into it. The ball's by you. spot and come in. That's just beautiful. Just stayed down with that down ball, flicked it cross court and finishes off at net. That's complete. Staying down, just like you said, John. Just getting all that lack of muscle into the ball. <laughs> <laughs> He's got wiry strength. Yeah. Guga's fit. Don't let the physique fool you. He's very fit. Two points now from Scoring this match. <laughs> this is Alex Karech's brother, Sergio. That's hard. Both players, strong family support here.
patient, kept it nice and deep, and then he steps in and just and that rips that back in again. It's just pretty the way he keeps his shoulder turned to the court like that. You have no idea if he's going to take it up the line or cross court. He can go either way with it. You see Larry getting pumped up, his coach there. Two set points. shake it off immediately. There's another set point. This is about that time I'd go looking for my towel and have a little conversation. It's about the time I would have gotten a new racket because the one I just used would have been tested. <laughs> will continue. It's just starting. <laughs> One set each. Now on MSNBC Live. Brought to you by Siebel, where good service is good business. Hi, everyone. I'm Ashley Banfield with a look at the headlines. Less than 24 hours before he is scheduled to die, Timothy McVeigh is perhaps apologizing for the first time. Earlier this morning, he was moved to the death house in Terre Haute, Indiana. In letters written to the Buffalo News, McVeigh says, I am sorry these people had to lose their lives, but that is the nature of the beast. It's understood going in what the human toll will be. The National Guard is having to step in to help flood ravaged southeast Texas. Two people have now died, and thousands have been moved to higher ground. And forecasters say another half foot of rain is expected today. In Denver, the Colorado Avalanche defeated the New Jersey Devils last night to win hockey's Stanley Cup. Afterwards, thousands of fans went so wild that police had to use pepper spray to control the crowds. Those are the latest headlines from NBC News. I'm Ashley Banfield. Once, when you gave someone your business, you got something in return. Service. Respect. In a sense that you were valued. At Siebel, we make application software that lets you make customers feel cared for again. A lot of companies use our technology, companies you know and like. It can work for your company, too. Siebel. Good service is good business. In a world of opportunity, how do you find a financial advisor who's right for you? Do you want one who works for the oldest company or the youngest? Do you want one with the fastest growing company or the most deeply rooted in tradition? Or do you simply want one who listens to you like you are the only investor in the world? Raymond James, you first. Okay, so you're set up with Total Choice Programming and sir, I also hooked up the NFL Sunday ticket subscription you signed up for. Ah, uh, that's for her. Oh. So you've also got Fox Sports Net. You get your regional sports. College basketball. ESPN Full Court. What about racing? Horses. Stock cars. <laughs> or fries. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now get free professional installation when you buy a DirecTV system and sign up for any DirecTV programming package. Reduce the reasons for not buying a Lincoln to a nice round number. Announcing 0% financing on every single 2001 Lincoln, low lease rates, and Lincoln will even make your first payment. Ah! 
Live in Paris, the sun is out now. <laughs> Shouldn't it be? It's snowing now. <laughs> That'll be the fifth set. Uh, two hours, 13 minutes. Alex Karachi just used his option to take a bathroom break. And uh, he's the lucky one. <laughs> it's one set apiece. This just another one of these great clay court classics that we've seen through the years of Roland Garros. And John, it seemed like Guga found the level of play finally after about two hours. He found his level the last few games of the second well, set. Well, the, the wind died down, mm -hmm. which helped. And he got a got little desperate, but he got through that negativity, and he's, he's back to his old self. Now can he maintain into a new set? I think he's, you'll see the answer is yes. That's it. That's well done. That's extra effort paying off for Correccia. Juan Antonio. Now going the president of the International Olympic Committee. The term will come to an end next month when the site for the 2008 Games is selected. And Paris, one of the finalists. That would be a nice place to have it, I must say. Uh, uh, you know, they can play the Stanley Cup finals here for all. I mean, we, 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 we might have come here. This is an incredibly beautiful city. We're smacking around some new balls. That ball's going to fly a little bit on him. It doesn't stop Krejci from sneaking in and putting away that volley. Say both players are happy in this position, though, because Kareich has done the best that he thought. I mean, he's got him where he wants him in the sense he's making this a long, mm -hmm. tough, grinding match, and Kirton's finally starting to feel feel himself. So, this next couple sets ought, ought to be very interesting. He does have a tendency to give away where he's going to hit his volleys. He's Turns, makes a decision. He, you can see he's going to go down the line. Kareja picks up on it and smacks a winner cross court. So right away a break point chance for Kareja. Now if he went to Wimbledon, like we'd like to see in there, Kieran, he'd learn he'd have to disguise his volleys a little better. like that one back. Very makeable there. Karecha for the first time after that point stretching out his his muscles, his leg, he may have gotten tight on the quadricep. That would not be a good sign. Looks to be in a little pain, discomfort. Whatever you do, don't show Kirtan. That was a great point that Jim Courier made I that during the second set. I'm going to never show your opponent any sign of vulnerability. Rachel has done a good job of that so far. So far. So far. All right, today at 5 Eastern on NBC, Ahmad Rashad hosts a special behind the scenes look at life at the NBA Finals. So it's a mod at 5 Eastern, then at 7 Eastern, Game 3 with the finals back in Philadelphia. First time in a long time, a game apiece. The Lakers and Sixers, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific for Game 3 here on NBC. That's a long show for a mod, isn't it? Two hours? It's 5 to 7? Is that right? 
He's got a, hey, he's a powerful uh, man. Uh, Amen. If anybody could pull it off. <laughs> I have a feeling there'll be a little local I'm, news I'm, squeezed I'm, in there somewhere. I'm, I'm between still, the two. I'm still trying to get over him leaving in the third set of my final in '84s. <laughs> <laughs> not that you were, not that you remember any of these things. No, I don't. I don't, I don't. He pulled a Clinton on me. Courage has got a sense this, doesn't he, John? But he's trying to keep being aggressive, take his chances, but he definitely senses it. And, and what I'd also do is cover that line. He loves to go up the line on that backhand side, but he is tough to read and can hit it cross court as well. <laughs> would you believe going to the forehand? Right? And then this bizarre. Afternoon, late afternoon now in Paris. The sun is out, but the wind is picked up. You can never get it quite straight here. You want me to do my Don Adams imitation to get smart? Mm -hmm. Mr. Fire that much. <laughs> All right, I got some work to do. Oh, no, that's going to drop in. Slice back in, return winner. Kirton definitely about to get on a roll that's not what you want to do if you're serving in volley the, se the hesitation serving volleys doesn't work too well well i think for the first time john you start to see courageous slump just a little bit starting to slump and that smile starting to break out of with kirton Rachel thinking, how am I going to stop this steamroller? Kirton now, for the first time, is, is taking over. Finally taking over this match. Sort of what I expected even earlier, but he's a patient fellow. <laughs> Wants to make things interesting. That's he's serving and volleying. Last Sunday, he... Showed that ability, he <laughs> pushed right to the wall by Michael Russell, waited to match point against. Oh. And Kalachian stops a run of eight straight points with that return. And maybe yes. pushing the envelope, but you see where Kalachian hit that return from. He was way, way off the court. Came up with a nice angle. That's the first sign of frustration. So we've seen the first sign of stiffness, first sign of frustration from Karecha. Guga loving every minute of it right now. Precisely, this crowd saw there. Yeah, this is just going for broke. Whoa, it, it did go in. Maybe I can get back in this game. There we go. Guga says no, and now he gives a pimp up towards his family. Three love in the third. In a world of opportunity. How do you find a financial advisor who's right for you? 
Do you want one who works for the oldest company or the youngest? Do you want one with the fastest growing company or the most deeply rooted in tradition? Or do you simply want one who listens to you like you are the only investor in the world? Raymond James, you first. It devours roads. Dances through corners. And slides effortlessly into your budget. Announcing 0% financing on every single 2001 Lincoln. Low lease rates. And Lincoln will even make your first payment. The LS from Lincoln. Today's most successful companies understand the need to do business with customers, suppliers, and partners in real time. Because it's not about the information age anymore. It's about the age of your information. Our live coverage continues from Paris, the 2001 French Open Men's Championship. And for two sets, the defending champ, Gustavo Kierden and Alex Gorechev, given the display of clay court tennis, a fight, a war, but now Guga has started to get on one of his patented roles. Since Karachi himself even knows this is his moment to stop it. It certainly is. I mean, he's he got to step it up a gear. Like that point. He made that little extra effort that got that backhand nice and low. And you saw it here. You're surprised it came back. One measly little step at a time. Remember all that training you did up in the mountains. Uh, Boy, it almost hit Kirt in that serve. That's how far out that was. The fact that you've revolved your whole schedule around peaking right at this moment. Keep reminding yourself that as the negativity comes inside your head. <laughs> Leg stiff. So he has two points in a row that he could easily have lost. Make sure that he tells Kierton telepathically that, look, even if I lose this third set, I still believe I can win this. Maybe I can get myself back in this set as well. So Rachel reach back to his mantra from earlier and again say I'm not Ferrero. I'm not going to let you think that I'm out of this match. Nice, easy game. Could use that. These two amongst the best on clay this year, but on the, the green clay in America, young Andy Roddick in a couple of tournaments. Roddick won those two little ones, but Kirt and Ferreira, two best in the business. Karecha, we, we, we've seen him for a number of years. It's, it's amazing how long we've been watching uh, Kirt now. Five years since his arrival. Oh. Back in Brazil, he's got two other very special people watching this match. His younger brother, Guillermo, who suffers from cerebral palsy, and to whom Gustavo has given all, every tennis trophy he's won. 
Bobby brother Raphael is here. And the other inspiration in Guga's life is his grandmother, Olga, who was actually here last year for the fun. That's too bad. I mean, he deserved that. Kareja is really hustling out there. Kieran hit a monstrous backhand up the line. And he hung tough and just missed that ball long. Half, yeah. As he, when he first half of the alley, he thought he had caught it too late. The second half was maybe it will drop in to no avail. He's got to look for that backhand up the line. Be fooled, even though that ball's up high. Guga does an amazing job handling with one hand that high back, one-handed backhand. That's that's tough to do, but he does it consistently well. In Portugal last year to win the world number one, he beat Andre Agassi. His backhand was so good that Andre said by the end of the match he was hitting his backhand. Guga was outside my hitting zone. Uh, to do that to Agassi? <laughs> On hard court? Ty a type of hard court? No, no. He's tripped over his own feet there as he was trying to. Uh, he uh, chipped on the clay. We'll reach back behind now. Deuce. So that time he was looking for it up the line. And once again, Kirt misses the volley. Now Perez has a chance to get right back on serve. That's where you gotta guess up the line there. That's a very educated guess. Very educated. Good decision. Oh! Just, oh, and Gracia jumping up and pointing. His heart speaking there. He wanted so badly for that great point to be in. See how yeah, close that was. I think he thought he saw some line. But now the umpire doesn't come out and take a look. Kareja thought was going long, but to his dismay, it bounced inside the line and couldn't get any depth on that lob. Kieran seems to rebound endlessly. Let's take a look at this one.
French Open Moments, presented by Raymond James. Some say the French Open is the hardest of the Grand Slam championships to win, but five men have won the Coupe des Mousquetaires at least three times. The last was Swede Mats Vilander in 1988. A winner in 82 and 85, Vilander had to defeat Frenchman Henri Leconte to claim his third French Open title. Live in Paris, Gustavo Kierten has now taken control. It's been very slow, very gradual, but he's beginning to impose his will on Alex Carreccia here in the third set. He was trying the first two, mm -hmm. to Carreccia's credit. He's hung tough and made an interesting final here. I just hope he's still got some more left in the tank. <laughs> I mean that more mental than physical because we've talked about his tip-top physical conditioning. Both guys getting some pretty good percentage on that serve and Kareccia continuing to hit more winners and errors. Certainly Gustavo's level of play has lifted the last half hour or so. And Kareccia was about an inch away from getting back on serve in the last service game. Tape unkind to both players. The first two points. The sixth game, third set. Appreciating these two players' versatility. Paul oh, okay. uh, uh, As Bears repeating, you just didn't see this before in the, in the 70s, 80s. Right. People, uh, clay court specialists, being able to serve volley. I'm just reading this, this article on the keep, and one of the things this coach says is it's hard to make Alice aggressive, so I don't even try anymore. Mm -hmm. Showing some pretty good aggressiveness here. He's, he's most comfortable being the counter puncher, isn't he? He's learned, though, it's a whole lot easier to w win some points like that. Recognizing someone being really on the defensive. Just chipping that ball like Guga did there. His coach, by the way, is Javier. Duarte. First double of the day for Carreccia. Javier Duarte, Carreccia's coach, was also one of the coaches for Spain's Davis Cup team. They had a revolving door. They basically had to eat the coach of each of the players, and, and they would take turns. And there's four ties if you win it, so each one got a chance at it. Duarte was the guy that stuck it to me, you know. He had a head-to-head -head coaching graphic there, but I convinced him he shouldn't show it. <laughs> Great, you want to show? He's got plenty more. There's Javier. Trying to pump up his man. Alex Carreccio, who actually apologized to Patrick Rafter after the Davis Cup Finals in Australia. The Spanish crowd was, uh, well, you went through it in July of last year. Apparently tuned up even more raucously for the finals. During play, and Carreccia afterwards went up to Raptor and apologized for his own country's fans. He was the guy that was, you know, of course, telling him to, to get crazy. It's always that way. Yeah. Got to keep your eye on the ball, Alex. Total miss hit that first point. Oh, A couple of years 
years ago when Moy and Karecha played there. I'm sure there are many who thought that would be the start of a, of the Spaniards taking over this event. Moy, of course, has gone through some physical trials and tribulations trying to come back from. Duarte, the coach for Karecha, said in that final, all the girls in Spain dreamed of Moya, but the mothers preferred they marry Alex. And I'm thinking that there must have been a coach in Queens who said that 25 years ago about you and Vetus, Carolinas, right? <laughs> All the girls now. dreamed of John McEnroe, but Run the mothers wanted them to marry Vetus. Oh, come right? on. <laughs> come on now, Ted. You're... Now, maybe in two hours when we're about five, but that's you. You hurt me there. You're making fun of me. No, I would never do that. Our Guga is now at one game away from the third set. The 2001 French Open from Roland Garros is brought to you by Morgan Stanley, formerly Morgan Stanley Dean Witter, move your money, get well connected. And by Porsche, discover what only Porsche brings to driving. Barrecha serving at 2 5 third set. Gustavo oh. Kierden now is, has found his game. After two hours and 42 minutes of battling, Karecha finds himself on the brink of being behind for the first time. And this clearly is the mental challenge of, of Clay. If only I knew. Yeah. When you play this long, if you're Karecha, you figure. Well, I don't break the next game. I'm going to have to play another two hours to win. That's what all that hard work's for. The, the ultimate satisfaction to be the, the Kirtan in five sets. If you were to win in four, it'd probably take two hours. It's come back from five, two down. Just about let this one slip away. It would be a tall, tall test. quite a bit now. He, he, he recognizes this has gotten away from him. Not a side of Carreccia that he often often shows. So, so much for not showing him what Ferrero showed. Mm -hmm. can sense this knowing that he could break right here it would break the spirit of courage in a millisecond which is why he missed that he got a little mm -hmm. tight you know still one more set point Set. So Guga 
down early, is now up two sets to one, looking for his third French Open title. It offers four tons of hauling capacity. Has three rows of seating. And most amazingly, is quite easy to carry. Announcing 0% financing on every single 2001 Lincoln, low lease rates, and Lincoln will even make your first payment. Navigator from Lincoln. There's a different way to look at your money. What's it say? ING. It's not an ending. It's a beginning. Once, when you took on a job, you did the job, start to finish. At Siebel, we make application software that lets you give your customers personalized service. We know it works because we track our own customers to make sure they're successful. No one asked us to follow up. No one had to. It's our job. Siebel. Good service is good business. I'm a partner in a small company. Really small. So why do I rent from Hertz? They offer low rates for small businesses like mine. That's big. Then there's Hertz number one club gold. No lines. I just go straight to my car. And when I book on Hertz.com, it's fast. That's really big. Hey, big guy. Done with those envelopes? Mm, not exactly. Shaq and Kobe shine as the Lakers tied their series with Iverson and the Sixers. Now, Pivotal Game 3. Tonight, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, NBC. Well, Ted, we've noticed since... Kareich is starting to let this slip away that uh, he's getting more and more frustrated. Pulled the Mac in there. You know, put the ball in the stands. And then you, they watered the court on him. It's the first time this is... Un I don't get these Spaniels. I mean, I said the same thing. They complain when you water the court. He should want them to slow it down. Right. Well, it's... John, do you sense it's a... He's confused. Well, but do you sense it's Kareich showing how much this means to him because of the lesson he learned here three years ago? Yes, fans. I mean, he's, he's, he definitely, he, he said that the first time he just, uh, he, he didn't want it enough. Now he really, really, really wants it, but uh, his opponent really wants it too. And he's really good. <laughs> you know, some people, I don't want to mention names, but they sort of thrive when they get intense and riled up. I, I have no idea who no. these people are. But for Karecha, that may not work for him. I hope it does. I always wondered how he would react to the crushing loss he suffered to Sampras five years ago, holding match point and eventually losing a fifth set tie break at the U.S. Open. He wondered if that was a loss that would linger for a long time. It didn't seem to with Correggio. It's actually one of his great moments. I always look at the match that I lost with Cor Gennady. It's my oh, proudest it. moment that I left the court in the, in the country there with the... I felt like people at a higher level of respect for mm -hmm. the way I played or competed and the stature was risen. It's a great lesson for your own kids to be able to say, hey, look, I'm, I'm better for losing. I think it's the same with Karecha in that match. I mean, he was pretty, pretty well virtually unknown in America, and he really, with that effort on that court, playing Pete, it was a, a tremendous, tremendous accomplishment to be part of that spectacle. He's got to pull himself together right now, Ted. He's two sets to one down. He's just lost to serve at love. 
they're going to switch sides oh, rather quickly here. And if he doesn't hold, it's going to be some big, it's, it's already big problems. Gugas has done so well. Wayne Ferreira beat him the first year he played here. And since then, uh, been able to win it twice. I should also point out that 98 second round, he lost to a then qualifier, but the guy he ended up battling for number one in the world last Not year, Brad Saffin. Saffin. And Saffin struggles this year after winning the U.S. Open. It started in Lisbon. If he had won one of his last two matches, he would have been number one. He said Kieran mm -hmm. took over, and he's had all types of troubles. Karecha was in Saffin's section of the draw. Murat's got to get himself back together. Even Tefelnikov is ripping him, saying he needs to be more professional. Concerned for Karecha right now. Things looking dismal. of positive energy that I have left in my body that they'll call. Keep reminding yourself that things change a lot in clay. It's possible to get back. Because you sense it's it, it's virtually over. But it but it isn't. It doesn't have to be. He's just uh, suddenly got himself in his own. This is what inspired the comment of getting the fellow cop made following the quarterfinals that he was like Picasso out here. Guga has tried to say, I'd like the little Van Gogh thrown in as well. Oh, the one is working its magic now. Brazilians that are here scattered throughout Court Philippe Chaprier start to sense what they have. Well, premiering tomorrow night at 8, 7 cent for what's NBC's newest primetime game, Fear Factor. Six real people facing three terrifying challenges in a battle of sheer nerve. Fear Factor premieres tomorrow on NBC. Is one of those challenges playing Goo Gun Clay? <laughs> <laughs> and then Sampras. <laughs> 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 Tenth ace. 113 miles an hour of Porsche serve speed. We've given up on that. It's amazing how long things can take sometimes on the Turbo 2. And then suddenly, Guga gets on a roll, and he can win games as if you were playing at Wimbledon. Just rip them off. Oh, I mean, in, in the defense of Ferrero and now Krejci, it, it, it's pretty difficult not to get negative when the, this barrage is coming at you. This is where you tell yourself, hey, I might not get another chance. This may be it for me. This is, he's trying to get some bounce back, some life to him. He, he doesn't have any stick on his ground strokes. He's lost the pace. So he, he, he's 
yeah. technically yeah. doing things he shouldn't be doing. He took his racket back and then took it back a second time. You got to just stick, keep it there. Maybe trying to generate some more pace. And Skuga with a couple points for three love now in the fourth. So when you're in, the few times you were in Karacha's shoes, did you ever want to drop your racket and just go time out? Wish they had one. Oh, uh, I bet you he does too. Uh, so now, Skuga dreaming of going home to Brazil, a champion again. Once, when you took on a job, you did the job. You saw it through no matter what. Words like pride and integrity sustained you until you finished what you started. Often in the business world of today, people put their own interests ahead of those who hire them. At Siebel, we make application software that lets you give your customers personalized service. Companies big and small use our technology. We know it works. We know because we keep track of our own customers to make sure they're successful. No one asked us to follow up on our own. No one had to. It's our job. Siebel. Good service is good business. In a world of opportunity, how do you find a financial advisor who's right for you? Do you want one who works for the oldest company or the youngest? Do you want one with the fastest growing company or the most deeply rooted in tradition? Or do you simply want one who listens to you like you are the only investor in the world? Raymond James, you first. Almost two different matches today. Court Philippe Chatrier and Roland Garros. Two fierce sets with Alex Garacha battling with all his might against the two-time champ. And now two sets that for Garacha have just been a nightmare. And he's shell-shocked right now. Just he can't do anything right. So often, even in a long play court match, one game can spin everything. And it was Karecha being broken at 5-6 to lose the second set. And he just has not recovered. I mean, it's 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 getting worse, too. It's, it's he's, He could be off the court in seven minutes at this rate. Karecha has only won one point in the fourth set. Let's see, it's 6.09 uh, Paris time. <laughs> see how long Karachi can stay out there. Now you're starting to see how Kirtan beat him straight sets four times in a row. to see more tennis they should be encouraging him not yeah. giving him a hard time I mean, lord knows they got to know he's got to be frustrated right now and this is john for any great athlete at this level there's there is a matter of embarrassment to you don't feel like you want to embarrass yourself absolutely. on the stage i mean this is what happens more to me uh happened to me as well but to a lot of players on this service more than any other where you just you, it's like you forgot how to play this guy looks like a bum right now. The guy was really tough the first couple sets. That's nice. Crowd trying to encourage him. Still down two more break points. Did you Google? I mean, he knows, right? This is it. Finish him off. Third French Open coming right up. Another break. 
the mom, <laughs> see, mom and Guga, they in sync, they the same, you know, there. pump fist. And you know that back in Brazil right now, they're starting to dance. Mm -hmm. they, they, they like to dance anyway, but they're in full swing now. In Camboreo, Brazil, which is now where Guga has an apartment, and that's where his grandmother Olga lives. 82 years of age, they speak at least once a week while he travels the world. That's out. Even that's out. There's nothing going right for Pirocho. That's pretty good indication of where things are going. Abysmally. John, you've played against some great players from South America. There have been some, not a, not a, a swarm. But it is astounding to see someone come from a country, as Guga says, where there's no professional tournaments. Where it's difficult to even get the right equipment to play when he was a kid. They have a lot, a lot more tournaments, and certainly now, if there's any chance, certainly is now with this guy. Mm -hmm. He's such a big hero there. I gotta get this out quick before he's before he's another oh, race. <laughs> and he has become a, a national hero in his country. And now he knows it's about to happen. A third French Open title. safe is your retirement plan? Sun America can help. Just ask your financial advisor. Sun America, the retirement specialist. These are photographs never seen before that are helping scientists discover things they never knew before. About tigers, information about tiger domains, migration patterns and feeding habits. They're giving us a better picture of tiger behavior and they're made possible with the help of ExxonMobil. Because unless we work together, tigers could be gone in a flash. To help, call 1-800-5-TIGERS. Oh, he looks so young there. Well, not like he looks old now, but in 1997, when he dispatched Sergei Bruguera and the world first learned how to say his name. And then he came back last year, this time, a win that put him uh, atop the tennis world. He ended the year as number one. Oh. And now Gustavo Kierton about to join an incredibly elite list of three-time French Open champions. And throughout this French Open, we've been yeah, struck by the number of matches that have had remarkable shifts. Almost inexplicable shifts. Andre Agassi lost in the quarters in one of those nines, and we're seeing another one here. Well, yes and no. I mean, this one, uh, Kareci was in for two sets, and it's been one shift. Bye-bye, yeah. Kareci. Mm -hmm. You would have thought, based on what we've seen the last couple of weeks, that he would have made a better effort to get back in this yeah. match. But Funny sets. Even, even that. <laughs> he, he, he hits an ace. He finally wins a point. He's won what, two points this whole set. Finally, the poor guy hits an ace and they call a let. And if there's ever an argument for not having lets on serve, it's right there. This guy's gone from 6-1 to 5-7 in the last 40 minutes, poor Kareji. Just feels absolutely horrific out there right now. Just literally just trying to win a game.
beautiful to watch in points like this. I mean, he's just uh, making this look so routine. It's it was incredible to see. After the struggle, he went through the first two sets. Classic light at the end of the tunnel. Somewhere right now, Michael Russell can't feel too bad. I mean, he's in Italy in a yeah. challenge tournament. Yeah. <laughs> Feels pretty bad in one way, though. Mm -hmm. He's so close. He's looking a whole lot better than a lot of players. You could do that to Kyrgyz? <laughs> and to see Kyrgyz do this to the best players in the game. He might pull a Jordan now, close his eyes and you know, hit a winner return like he hit that free throw. He doesn't even need to watch the ball. Triple match points. Get ready for the heart. Heart part two. Celebrate, wasn't it? The hands are going up. Hang on just a minute. I don't suspect it will be too much longer. Now this would be the turnaround of all time. That was a gimme for Kieran. And he gave it right back. Donald Duck. Kierden didn't think he's playing Magnus Norman again. Magnus Norman saved 10 championship points last year. energy Ted and he'll be down 5-1 it's a start it's a start
fault. But he's doing exactly what you would teach your kids to do. But what's <laughs> what? Never say, never give up. Play never it say out. Done. Okay. Play it out. Kierton can trip and sprain his ankle this point. See what Aki's come up with now. Now it is the heart again. <laughs> what an unlikely marriage. A surfer dude from a beach town in Brazil and Paris, France. And it is a love affair that you think is going to last another decade. Yeah, look at the, hey, he's got the cash climb now. Of Coach Passos. Mom and brother. And you know that Grandma and his younger brother Guillaume are doing the same right now in Bombario, Brazil. He was asked a few years ago, how could you come from Brazil and not play soccer? He said, if you ask me that, you've never seen me play soccer. This is the third one. <laughs> what a tennis player. Uh, the inevitable finally took place. This guy is absolutely awesome. Absolutely awesome on this surface. Well, he's now alongside Lendl and DeLander. Trailing only board. What company to keep? Three times a winner in Paris. And young enough to fully expect to have more chances. Family here representing a nation. A nation where soccer is the king, but right now Gustavo Gerden is their athletic hero. And the coach that he's been with since his earliest years playing tennis. Brings chills to the spine. Guga reigns again in Paris. The trophy presentation comes your way next. Boxster S. Even heaven has its moments of hell. It's coming. And nothing can stop it. More information than you've ever seen before. Today, 
EMC is the one place that lets you access all your information from any place. And when you can do that, there's no limit to what you can do. EMC, where information lives. The rules for making money have changed. Pinstripes, wingtips, that's not how it works anymore. Anybody can be the next big wheel, as long as they put their money in a better place. Welcome to the new Old Boys Club. Less old, less boys. Morgan Stanley, move your money, get well connected. Time for the Morgan Stanley point of the day. And after three hours and 12 minutes, the last 30 to 35 minutes, John Vintage Guga out of this world. Couldn't play it any better than he did. He took a two-time French Open finalist and reduced him to a mere mortal. Gustavo Kirt, we just need more and more players to have that, that absolute joy to be out in that tennis court. When he walks on this court, he says it, and he is blessed. A three-time French Open champion. every moment of joy for the champion there is also the runner-up and the other dejection and Alex Karecha must feel in his second appearance in the French Open final but now the trophy presentation and Guga hey. up on the podium to be presented the trophy by Jim is. Courier and by David Guillet twice an Olympic judo gold medalist from France. Alex <laughs> sense that this is not going to take Alex Karecha two days to feel the pain of this. Yeah, he's gotten there already to make such a good effort and then have it slip so badly the last two sets. That was too bad. Guga holding the Coupe de Mousquetaire aloft for the third time. We'll hear Guga in just a moment. This week, Lifeline. You can't see it, but it's in the air you breathe. An invisible danger that actually triggers heart attacks. Don't miss NBC Nightly News this week. Hurricane season is here. When the big storms threaten, trust the weather leader, the News Channel 2 Storm Team. Led by veteran chief meteorologist Dave Marsh, it's Central Florida's only weather team with the advantage of five full-time meteorologists and the power of today's top technology. Now you can watch News Channel 2 and track the storms at home with the News Channel 2 Hurricane Survival Guide and Map. Pick one up today at Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouse and IHOP Restaurants. Cool, smooth, and easy. Speed Pass at Mobile brings convenience to a new level. You can use Speed Pass for gas, or you can use Speed Pass inside the Mobile Convenience Store. By just waving your Speed Pass at the counter, everything will be automatically billed to a credit card or check card you already have. Where can I get one of those? Get a free speed pass. Call 1-877-MY-MOBILE. News Channel 2, where the news comes first. The 2001 French Open from Roland Garros is brought to you by KPMG. Doing business today requires a deeper understanding. Understanding at KPMG. By Porsche. Discover what only Porsche brings to driving by ING. Back in Paris, here's the champion. Cedi et l'an dernier, et cette année, je vous parle en français ici. J'espère. 
J'espère que vous tout comprenez. Premier, je, je vous félicite à Alex. C'est très bien joué. C'est un grand compétiteur. Et toute sa famille et son entraîneur, c'est très gentil. Après, euh, c'est pour moi très très important. Moi, moi entraîné, ma famille aussi, ma maman, Rafa. Merci beaucoup, beaucoup. Je t'aime. Et après, je pense que je ne sais pas qu'est-ce qui se passe parce que tous les, les qui ont passé ici, pour moi, c'est vraiment incroyable, c'est magnifique. Euh, je pense que les qui ont fait sur les cours le dimanche dernier et aujourd'hui avec les cours, c'est les qui représentent pour moi. Viens ici jouer pour vous. Je aime jouer Roland Garros. Je aime jouer pour vous. Et merci beaucoup pour, pour tout. Respect. Viens ici à, à l'année well, prochaine. Gustavo Gerdin is. No wonder these people love him. Not only speaking in French, hardly his native language, but congratulating first Alex Carreira on his wonderful effort, his family, his coach, uh, all of his countrymen here. And Just ah, telling Brazilian, him how much he loves playing here, de ici, loves being in Paris. That's an understatement. Right? Mm -hmm. Another nod to his, his countrymen who were scattered throughout court Philippe Chatrier. That's as impressive as the effort on the court, the French from Guga. We've got this e-business thing nailed. We know exactly what our customers want. And we streamlined our supply chain so we could get it to them fast. We're in Belgium. Our overseas operation. How do you do it? Follow me. Now don't freak out. Please. No pictures. You can do anything with the Black Rocket, the e-business network platform from Genuity. Get behind the scenes on America's hottest new game show. Find it at NBCI.com slash weakest link. It's a land where one American is considered almost royalty. Will we witness the coronation of King Pete VIII? Wimbledon. Coverage begins June 30th on NBC. Returning to the trophy presentation after Gustavo Kierden's third French Open championship. And just a moment ago, we heard Gouguet in French. Now, the runner-up, Alex Carreccia. Uh, we should have Jim well, on here. Yeah. French. Je vous dis sans main, félicitations à Guga parce qu'il a fait un très grand match à la, à la fin. Il était supérieur à moi dans le quatrième et le troisième set. Et quand même, il était un grand victorieux. Félicitations. And congratulations pour Guga, especially pour le third set. Pour son third French Open Championship. Maintenant, je vais parler espagnol. Gracias. Sí. Maintenant, je vais parler pas pour vous. Merci. Gracias pour apoyarme. Familia, amigos, novias, tous. 
Gracias por todos los que habéis venido desde España, desde cualquier sitio, Andorra, Moscú, donde hayáis venido. Gracias por apoyarme. Muchas gracias a tu Tom que es Tiki Ballén. Gracias a los que estáis en España, a Barcelona, a Mola Graiz. Y no pienso ir remes. La espera está total partida en contra meva. Ahora no pienso ir remes. Gracias. And a nice one, a noble one, and a little French, and then addressing his family and his supporters in his native tongue, Spanish. What an international day in Paris. And always the most difficult picture in the world. No smiles from Alex Carrecha, and ear to ear for Guga, a three-time champion at Roland Garros. His first French Open win, he denied Sergi Bruguera, a Spaniard, his third. Jim Courier himself was denied a third by Sergi Bruguera, and now Guga in that group with Mats Wielander, Yvonne Lendl, and only the astounding Bjorn Borg who won here six times without ever losing in the finals. The only man ever to beat Borg here was Adriano Panata. And Guga is the first French Open champion to save match point since Adriano Panata did it 25 years ago. Panata saved a match point in the first round, went on to defeat Harold Solomon in the final to win his only Grand Slam title. And a week ago, this would never have seemed possible when Guga faced match point against Michael Russell, an American qualifier that many had never heard of. Kirton got through that match and really was not pushed again until Karecha, who took the first set today and seemed to, to be destined to take the second set to another tiebreaker. It's too bad it ended that way, though. I mean, obviously, it was some amazing tennis, but. Things were actually starting to get interesting now. We'll come back. Bud Collins will have a chance to speak with Guga, the champion, when we return. Boxster S. Even heaven has its moments of hell. That was great. <laughs> Let's play one more. Oh, too tired. One more. Come on. New one a day active. The energy enhancing multivitamin. Hey you! You wanna play one? Just one? One a day. Get active, stay active. <laughs> Information is everywhere. It's that kind of world. But being financially successful isn't about getting information. It's about getting the right information from the right financial advisor. Morgan Stanley. Move your money. Get well connected. Get expert advice on cars before you get behind the wheel. Find it at NBCI.com slash autos. C-Dot. C-Dot Run. C-Dot Push. C-Dot Win. C-Dot Win Again. C-Dot Cook. C-Dot Inspire. C-Dot Go. See where Dot gets all her energy. I love this bed. Sealy Posturepedic, the bed more orthopedic surgeons sleep on. We support you night and day. Shaq and Kobe shine as the Lakers tied their series with Iverson and the Sixers. Now, Pivotal Game 3, tonight, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, NBC. This is the Sun America NBC Sports Desk. Here's your host, Ted Robinson.
At Roland Garros, Gustavo Kiertin just crowned a three-time champion in a fabulous match with Alex Karecha, and the runner-up is with Bud Collins. Alex Lastimas, but you had a wonderful tournament. What seemed to happen at the end? Did the bottom fall out for you, or was it Kiertin? No, I think I was uh, pretty focused, you know, at the beginning, first set, second set, even the third set I was there, I had a couple of chances, some break points, I didn't make them, but uh, I think I had five full break point, I got a great opportunity to serve for the set and go two sets to love down, up, I mean, and uh, I didn't convert them, and then afterwards, when he won the second set, he starts to play much better, he started to hit the the ball harder and for me it was pretty difficult to manage the game and I think I lost a little bit my focus on the fourth set. Alex, you did not play Wimbledon last year as a protest to the seedings. Will you be there this year? Well, we will see what they do with the seedings this year. Of course, I think I'm going to be top 10 again and I don't know if they're going to respect my ranking this time but uh, I would love to see if they do it. Well, I hope so. Muchas gracias. Thanks. Alex Correja. <laughs> Well, Guga is being chased by Rachel Gerstein. She's pulling his sweater. And here he comes. Pada Benz, Guga. Are you there? All right. Hearts and flowers. You draw pretty well. And this is Guga's garden. Congratulations. What happened? How did you take over when you were playing so badly? Yeah, I think uh, the conditions at the beginning was extremely bad to play. Uh, like a hurricane all the time in the court. Yeah, it's many, a uh, lot of wind. It's really tough, especially for me with contact lanes with the sand coming in the eye all the time. It was tough to manage to play well. And Alex was playing deeper than me. I could not attack him. So I think I had to, to, to fight, fight until the time I really felt the ball better. And uh, from that, that part on, I really start to move him around, make him uh, feel more tired than at the beginning and uh, at the end I just play my best tennis for sure. Well, this is your court. You said you feel a very special feeling when you get in this place. Yeah, look. Could... Oh! You love, you are an art, you are a Picasso. Yeah, you you love Roland Garros. That's well, you ought to love it three times. Yes, I gotta love this place. Everything that happened to me here is just uh, uh, unbelievable. Uh, I, every time I come here, I, I really give it all. It's like uh, a magic place for me. All the dreams coming true. So for me, uh, it's the place I, I always gonna enjoy more playing. And it's, so far, it's the place that I have more uh, better emotions in in my tennis. Wait, can you feel that backhand coming into tune? Well, the the beginning was not so easy. You know, I had. Uh, I miss a couple of them, I miss my confidence, but then was the, the key of the match. I think my, my backhand down the line and then coming cross court to the, to the net. So I start to play more aggressive and uh, my backhand always uh, helped me a lot when I, when I need that. Guga, you are the number one player in the world. Will you be at the number one tournament Wimbledon? Uh, I think not. I, I had uh, many, many weeks playing. I feel very, very tired. I had to, to rest a little. So last year I went there after here winning and uh, I got sick. So I think I'm going to take a little time off. I didn't have at the end of the last year. Might you reconsider? Uh, maybe, but uh, like I said, uh, I think it's, it's the right time to stop. Otherwise, I'm going to uh, really uh, put away all the end of the year for myself. Well, Pana Benz, here's your champion, you. Guga Man. Ted? <laughs> Guga man. Guga man is he? He He's understands Paris, doesn't he? Like Pete understands Wimbledon. Exactly. <laughs> what an artiste. Gustavo Kerton, the men's champion again at Roland Garros, a three time champion. Well, we'll come back and continue from Roland Garros. And this will be Jennifer Capriati the day after. When we this continue. has been the Sun America NBC Sports Desk. Sun America, the retirement specialist.